Hey guys, welcome to Navigating Teen Life. I'm Julia. And I'm Micah. We've all seen the news lately with coronavirus, the protests, the elections, and everything else going on in the world. And you're probably wondering how you can make a difference. Well, when you're 18, that comes in the form of voting. Some of you may feel very strongly about some subjects, and those of you who are 18 may already know what kind of actions you're going to take to make a difference. But some of you may not know where to start or what to think. We're not here to make judgments or pick sides. We're not even telling you who to vote for or what all the answers are. But it's important to educate yourself on, on the importance of voting and democracy and government so that whenever something does happen in the news, you'll know what's going on and why it's important. Knowledge is important because that leads to forming your own opinions. And everyone has opinions, but you won't always agree, and that's OK. So today, we're going to be learning about the basics of government, democracy, and voting with Tracy Sima, a local social studies teacher. She'll be talking over some of the stuff with our teen ambassadors. Hi, thanks so much for inviting me to be here today. I am super excited to talk about government with you. But before we do, I want to get to know you and know what you've already learned about government and civics and some things you might already be involved in. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, so yeah, I guess I'll go first. I learned about government in class at school. And after I learned about government, I just became very interested in politics. So I actually ran for student body president this year, and I, and I won the election. Oh, congrats. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I want to achieve a couple of goals as president. First, I want to do the simple things, just like improving the environment of the school. So like putting microwaves in the cafeteria so people can bring hot foods to school. And I want to improve the quality of the snacks. But in the long run, my uh, end goal is just to give each student a voice in our school. So even though I can't vote in the US elections quite yet, I can still participate in government, through uh, school and student body. Yeah, yeah, I Good. think that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was involved in student government for three years, and um, I really love the process of voting, mainly because I won secretary. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <my God>. Congratulations <laughs> to you too. Thank you. I really liked gov student government because I had a voice in how to help and improve my school. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. a big part of it. Just, just having a voice in your school. You that's know? fantastic. That's good. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm super proud of you guys for getting involved and for learning what you're doing. And I'm really excited for your teachers, too. That got you kids excited to, to take it to the next level. But for those of you that are out there that are watching and you haven't had any government or civics and um, you're not involved yet, let's talk about some ways to do that. How's that sound? Sounds good. Sounds All right. Yeah. So as we know, right, governments have been around for centuries. And uh, with city states and governing bodies, but the major problem was that the people of those areas had no voice. So we're going to fast forward a few thousand years. It took and a long time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, th you think so? Yeah. And uh, jump over the pond, and let's come over to North America. And at the time, we were the English colonies being ruled by? Great Britain. Great Britain. Yes. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> she beat you. And King George III, right? And our founding fathers were kind of tired of not having a voice. Mm -hmm. So finally, on July the 4th, 1776, right, they declared our independence. And um, we became the United States of America. And as we know, the war went on, and who won? We did. We did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. Um, and therefore, you know, we were super excited for that. But the only problem was we had no parent country, mm -hmm. and we had no government. So it took quite a few arguments and compromises in Congress. Just like we do today, right? Amen. <laughs> Just like we do today, you got it. And um, eventually, on September 17th of 1787, our Constitution was then signed. Took some time, though, it wasn't until 1788 that it was fully ratified because in the beginning we didn't have any amendments and no Bill of Rights, so no safeguards for the people. And remember, that was the reason why we declared independence, right? Because we wanted a voice in our, in our government. Yeah. But our government was formed. We have three branches of government, same branches of government that we had back then. And uh, we have a system of checks and balances, so hopefully not any one branch becomes too powerful. But more than anything, we have to remember that we had those amendments in our Constitution, and that's what safeguards um, the citizens of America. Yeah, I, I think it's very interesting how far we've come Yeah, in the last 300 years, so I think that's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Since I'm 18, I just registered to vote, and I'm looking forward to exercising my right to vote in this year's election. I'm also 18, and I also just registered to vote, and I'm looking forward to vote because, personally, I've you know changed a lot of what I believe during my high school years, and I'm really glad because I feel like I now have a better focus on what I think and what I think should change and whatever, so I'm glad that now I can vote and make some decisions in that aspect. Mrs. Seema, why is it important to vote? Sometimes I feel like my one vote won't matter in the general election. I agree, and I've had that conversation with many people, does your vote really count? And imagine if everyone felt that way, then no one would vote. 
right? But your vote matters for every election that, that you kids have an opportunity to vote in. Um, think about it, you're supporting your ideas, correct? Mm -hmm. You're also holding someone accountable by putting them in office. So your vote absolutely counts. So you want to make sure that you do that because, you know, our founding fathers and people fought for our voter rights. There were actually, do you know how many t amendments there are? Do you kids remember how many amendments there are? I'm going to guess 27. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You are right. Wait, I am? You are. Oh, awesome. <laughs> You're right. There are 27 amendments. And actually, there are four voting amendments. Can you believe that? Out of those 27. So more than anything, there are more voting amendments than anything else. The first voting amendment was um, actually um, the 15th Amendment, right after the Civil War, the Reconstruction Amendments in 1870. And before that, only white men could vote. So you and I couldn't do it, right? <laughs> but Amendment 15 allowed for all males to vote, and you couldn't be discriminated against, against your, your race or your beliefs. It was actually a half century later, 1920, to the 19th Amendment when women suffrage and we finally got our right to vote. Isn't that <laughs> time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but believe it or not, it was another like 40 plus years and it was Amendment 24 in 1964 because before then there was still, um, sometimes there was poll taxes and voting taxes. And so if you were not able to vote in some states because you couldn't afford it. So that was actually abolished any poll taxes. And then the most recent voting amendment, you kids weren't born for that one either, was actually in 1971 with Amendment 26. And what happened then is that the voting age changed. It used to be you had to wait till you were 21. And now you can vote just like you kids did at the age of 18. And it was changed because thousands of young men were drafted or enlisted for the Vietnam War, but yet they didn't have the right to vote. So that's why it's really important that you exercise your right to vote. And you both said that you um, can vote, right? Yep. And do you remember how you registered to vote? I registered online. Fantastic. I had a uh, friend who um, interned at the courthouse, so he got me some papers and I filled those out and I sent it in through the mail. Excellent. When my daughters turned 18, that was one of the very first things I gave them, was those voter registration cards. I didn't care how they wanted to register, it was purely up to them, but it was really important that they exercise the right to vote. So you can also um, register at PennDOT, and you can also register some local agencies. So keep that in mind, just like where your friend works. You can actually go online at votespa.com um, and find out some more information about Pennsylvania and how to vote. So congratulations on doing so, and you get to vote in your first presidential election this year. So what can we do to participate in government if we can't vote yet? Yeah. Well, first off, I want to congratulate you because you are participating in your local and your school oh, government. Thank so, you. Thank you. Good <laughs> job. Because that was definitely, absolutely, that's one of my first suggestions, to get involved in student government, maybe join a debate team, right? You can go to your local school board meetings, or you can go to your county meetings or your township meetings. Those are excellent ways. I know sometimes kids can even sit on the school boards. Yeah. to do that and you can represent that. Have a great conversation with your family and your friends and keep an open ear. Never ever, you know, you're gaining knowledge so mm -hmm. don't prejudge, you know, exactly, one thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, make sure that you read and you listen to a variety of news stations, not just one. Yeah. That's right. really good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've uh, dabbled in iCivics.com. That's another great platform to do. On, on I've never social. heard of yeah. that. Yeah. iCivics.com. You'll right. really like it. Yeah. Non-biased, right? No. Nope. I'm really not biased at all. Absolutely. Um, another thing that you can do if there's a candidate out there that you enjoy, um, you, know, you can work at their polls. You can make phone calls for them. You could work. Um, you can hand out literature. So those are just some ways to get involved. But more than anything, when you do turn 18, Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to be looking to make sure that you kids register to vote, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you remember the different ways I talked about that you could register to vote? Yeah. Um, because, you know, so many people in the past have fought for us to vote and to give us those rights. And that is a freedom that we have in America that many countries still don't have. So make sure that you guys get out and you exercise your right to vote. You promise? Promise. promise. Okay. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Remember to subscribe to Navigating Teen Life for more videos like this one. Bye. Bye. See ya.